My sump pump prevents a $30,000 basement flood. Explained very simply. For the professional plumbers in wet climates, this device could be your best friend. For the DIYers, knowing how this thing works is critical basement saving knowledge. And for every homeowner, this little pump could be the only thing standing between you and a $30,000 flood. You need to understand how it works before you need it. So let's check this thing out. When it rains heavily, the ground around your foundation gets super saturated with water. Now that water builds up pressure and it will try to find a way inside. It can get into your basement if it's not waterproof properly. There is a pit called a sump pit. It's designed to be the lowest point collecting all that water before it can flood your floor. Now inside the pit is the sump pump. The magic starts with this little guy right here. This is the float switch. And as the water fills the pit, this float rises with it. And here's the thing, this is the brain of the operation and it's also the number one point of failure. If this switch gets stuck or fails, the pump will never turn on. This is the Grundfos M803. Now, if your sump pit gets garbage or stuff like that in it, a grinder pump may be exactly what you need. If it's just a sewer ejection pump, well, you may want a grinder pump there too. But here's the thing at the end of the day, making sure that you check your sump pit. You wanna make sure that it's clean, there's no trash in it. If it is a sewer ejection pit, maybe you wanna cover on it that's sealed off so you don't get sewer gases in your basement. There's a lot of different type pumps out there. Make sure you get the right one. But like I said, make sure that you check your sump pit. Make sure it's clean. Make sure it's clean, free of debris, anything like that. And if this is a basement, you wanna make sure that you've got the right size pump in there to do what you need to do. Now, if it's a basement that's an occupiable space, there's probably not gonna be a lot of water in there. Literally, this should only kick on in case of an emergency. Like I said, tons of rainwater flooding your basement, that could be a good reason there. But these things are fantastic, used in the right way, they're phenomenal. I remember working on a house in Dallas one time, they did not have a sump pit. They didn't have anything, but they kept getting water under their house because of where it sat on the property. We went in, cleaned out a really good area. Now I told them, you may wanna come back in and concrete this later, or you're gonna to have to come back and clean out the area a lot because all this dirt's gonna wash out. I never heard back from them, so I'm assuming they did exactly what I said to do. But we installed this, kicked it outside and ran it out to where they were gonna have the landscape guy dig a trench. That way they could run this all the way out to the street and it would actually pump out into the street and end up in the gutter, not back under their house. One of the big things is make sure if it is an ejector pump like that, you get it out, that way it's not just cycling right back through. Now this is a Zoller grinder pump. This is the M803A. Now you may not need a grinder pump, okay? A grinder pump's got like a garbage disposal blade on the bottom, and you know what? We made a cool video showing what all things that this can eat up. So guys, the float, what makes this thing work is actually this right here, okay? Now this, it can be plastic, it can be a rubber ball, it can be all kinds of different things but the switch is actually in here. And if you listen to it, you can hear that switch going off and on. When this thing comes up, it tells the pump, hey, you need to kick on. We've got more water in here than we're supposed to have. And it will run and come out right here. Now, one big thing to remember, the discharge here will have a check valve on it. You wanna make sure that if you have to take this thing out or whatever, you don't, miss putting that back in. You'll cause this thing to cycle and run all the time. And that is a mistake that I've seen before after homeowners try to do this themselves. So when the water lifts the float to a certain level, it flips this switch on the inside of the pump and the motor kicks on. Then it immediately begins pumping the water out of the pit and through the discharge pipe, sending it far away from your house's foundation. It's critical that this discharge pipe discharges downhill and away from the house. Otherwise, you're just recycling the same water. You're pumping it right outside, it goes down through the foundation, back in and back out again. Now, once the pump shuts off, all the water sitting in that vertical discharge pipe 
wants to fall back down into the pit. That's where the crucial part comes in, in the check valve I talked about. Now this is a one-way door. It lets water go out, but it slams shut, preventing it from coming back in. And if you don't do that, it's gonna be a pain. Now there's a couple of different type check valves you can have. You can have a spring check, you can have a ball check, but you wanna make sure that it's working properly. Because without it, your pump would turn on and off about every 10 seconds, and it's gonna burn itself out in one single rainstorm. It's just gonna keep going on and off, on and off, on and off. So let's put it all together. Groundwater enters the pit, the float rises with the water, the switch, right there, activates the pump, the pump discharges the water outside and hopefully far enough away from your house that you don't get it again. So the check valve stops it from coming back. Now this simple automatic cycle is the only thing protecting your basement, your belongings, and your peace of mind from a catastrophic flood. Now, people ask me all the time how to move up and make more money in the trades. Understanding a critical system like a sump pump is what separates just a parts changer from a true problem solver. Knowing the why behind every single component allows you to diagnose issues faster and provide real lasting solutions for all of your customers. If you're ready to build that deeper level of diagnostic skill and become the go-to expert in your field, my course about how to become the best tradesman is designed for you. You will learn GAIN. G, get clear on the opportunities available to you. A, achieve the knowledge and skill that makes you a valuable asset and separates you from your peers. I, instill confidence in the crews working for you. And N, never worry about your career again. Check out the link in the description if you wanna learn more about it. This video was sponsored by Leak Pro, leak-pro.com. If you're a plumbing company owner or you're a plumber and you wanna learn how to improve your skills, your services, the value you bring to your customers each and every day, Go to leak-pro.com, check out the training, check out the equipment, and it'll help you take care of your customers better. So now that you understand the basement saver, check out this video right here on how your entire city's water system works, or the video over here on the number one mistake that causes water heaters to flood. I'll see you in the next video.